Hey, I'm Jay, and this is Wired Wednesday, where the only thing wired is the host. Before we get started, I want to take a moment to apologize for the lack of Wired Wednesday episodes lately. We've been putting a lot of effort into growing and improving our podcast at the expense of some of our other content we produce. We'll be making an effort to release uh, Wired Wednesday episodes far more frequently. We have a lot of good stuff planned, so if you're looking to entertain that geeky side of you, be sure to keep an eye on our channel. That being said, today we're going to discuss a topic that's starting to make headlines, net neutrality. While it may sound like another boring phrase like food regulations or tax code, net neutrality is a phrase that should be on everyone's mind right now. Net neutrality is the idea that internet service providers like your cable or phone company must treat all internet traffic the same. For example, streaming video from Netflix must be given the same priority as content from YouTube or that cat picture that grandma sent you on Facebook. It also means that an ISP can't prioritize traffic to and from one of their own services over everyone else. So Comcast, who owns NBC, can't disable access to or slow down video from Fox or ABC to give their content an edge. Verizon can't just disable access to Sprint or T-Mobile's websites to discourage their customers from researching new cellular deals. In fact, there's an image made by a Reddit user named Quink that's been making its rounds on social media that does a great job of showing exactly what we could see if net neutrality is done away with. Rather than paying a flat fee for access to the entire internet and all online services, we could be looking at something more akin to a traditional tiered television package, with a basic subscription offering access to just a few websites with other content and services locked behind premium tiers and add-on packages. As the growing cord cutting trend illustrates, this doesn't work for TV and it certainly won't work for the internet. On the other hand, losing net neutrality will make it difficult for small players in the internet realm to compete on a level playing field with giants like Facebook and Google. As it is right now, anyone with an idea and the talent to do so can create something and put it up on the web for their audience, whether that's a podcast, a web series, music, or even a new service or social media platform. In 2014, Netflix and Comcast got into a rather vocal argument about this very situation. Netflix use was starting to pick up, although they hadn't quite reached their uh, binge-watching peak that they're at now. Comcast decided that they should be compensated for the heavy traffic streaming video generated. Netflix didn't feel like they should have to pay Comcast for an internet fast lane of sorts. As the debate heated up, Netflix claimed that since their disagreement started, customers' streaming speeds had dropped by 27%. The implication being that Comcast was intentionally slowing Netflix traffic down to force them into paying up. Eventually, Netflix relented and entered into a paid peering agreement that allowed them to tap into Comcast's network directly. For a fee, of course. You may find yourself asking, well, why shouldn't Comcast get to do what they want with their network? Especially if it's generating a lot of traffic, like Netflix. And while this argument sounds completely reasonable on the surface, it's much more complicated than that. Firstly, in most parts of the country, customers generally have only one, or if they're lucky, two choices for broadband internet. Going back to our Netflix example, that means that Comcast would have been able to slow that traffic down to act as a bargaining chip, knowing that the vast majority of their customers had no choice but to continue using them for their internet access rather than moving to some competitor who wasn't manipulating traffic. Secondly, the internet has been open from day one, allowing anyone the opportunity to create something great. Google started out as a research project by Larry Page and Sergey Brin while they were attending Stanford. Uh, Facebook started its life as a hot or not clone called FaceMash, started by Mark Zuckerberg as a sophomore in college. Hell, Amazon.com, which is the largest retailer in the world, got its start out as, in, in Jeff Bezos' garage. All these huge players got their start as a tiny project someone had the talent and drive to create. If ISPs get their way and web-based services have to pay up to each and every provider just so their customers can get an acceptable experience, who's going to be able to afford to be the next college kid with an idea that sparks a revolution? That's why in 2015, the SEC received 4 million comments in favor of changing the definition of the internet to a telecommunications service, which would allow them to uphold net neutrality. The FCC under Tom Wheeler reclassified ISPs as a Title II common carrier, under the Communications Act in 1934, so they would have the authority to mandate the necessary rules to keep the internet an open and level playing field for everybody. Fast forward to today, the Trump administration's appointee for chairman of the FCC, Ajit Pai, has been very vocal about his desire to see net neutrality rules go the way of the dodo. The proposal they dubbed Restoring Internet Freedom, no really, that's what they're calling it, Restoring Internet Freedom, is already on the table. 
regardless of your party affiliation or political viewpoint, if you use the internet on a daily basis, net neutrality should be important to you. Despite having a name as, ex as exciting as Dryer Lint, the fact is that strong net neutrality rules are the only things that allow small content creators like us to be able to do what we do and not get brushed aside by the big guys or allow that smart college kid to go and create the next Facebook in their dorm room. If you believe that, then take a few minutes to let the FCC know. They're taking public comments right now on their proposal to dismantle the free and open internet. If you go to the FCC's webpage uh, on the proposal, you can see a small plus express link to submit a comment. Now we have it posted up over there showing you where that link is. Well, and we'll also put the link in the video description below. Last time they received a few million comments in support of net neutrality, the FCC created the rules. Let's just hope a few million more will make them decide to keep it. Anyway, we really hope you found this video to be informative. If you'd rather see us make dick jokes and point out absurd news stories, you can watch our podcast every Thursday. If you enjoy what we do, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And see you tomorrow.